Hi everybody. I usually don't go to much conferences, and when I go, I, I talk usually about Redis, but not this time. This time is different because, uh, because of Redis, I was forced to design a new message queue, a distributed one, and uh, it's called uh, this queue. So good luck Googling for it if the project gets traction. The first question I didn't ask it myself was why another message queue? Because there are like, I don't know, 1,000. Uh, but I, I was already in the business without even wanting it because many people are using Redis as a message queue already. Do you know there are many popular libraries like Sidekick, uh, Rescue, and many others. There must be a reason why people use Redis for a message queue. Maybe because it has a few primitives that makes you able to configure your own message queue. It's like uh, building blocks to create your specific message queue. But Redis is not designed to be a good message queue from the point of view of the guarantees it is able to provide. Because fast, low latency, data structures with, with big values have very different trade-offs compared to messages you don't want to lose in the face of uh, failures. And so uh, a few months ago, I started to write uh, this new project. It has its roots on Redis, because what I did was to take the Redis source code, empty it from Redis itself, and what remained was like a skeleton to write a new server. But it's the same protocol, the same string libraries, the same event library, and uh, it's the same license, BSD license. For me, it's very important contract with my users to provide code on, under the BSD license. However, in one thing, this is completely different from Redis. Why? Usually, Redis tries to expose in a very hard way to the users the trade-offs they are making. This queue instead want to be kind of magical. Magical means that the cluster is responsible for the complex stuff. The users just use the API and certain guarantees are provided without even making the client aware of what is happening behind the scene. The, the scene. What is paradigm shift? Because I think that messaging is a simpler problem compared to data structure server and compared to most kind of databases, the queue, message queue is a kind of database, but it's a very specialized kind of uh, database where some things can be provided with less efforts compared to more complex uh, databases. This queue is not a gen general message system. There are messaging systems that can do any kind of messaging. Publish, subscribe, uh, and you can configure, configure exactly the topologies, the semantics. This uh, is still pretty general, but when there was to make a precise design uh, effort, there was a tension between, between multiple designs. My reference was that I wanted it to be good for asynchronous jobs execution, because this is what most people are using Redis currently when you use it as a message queue. In this paradigm, there is usually a producer that produces messages and a consumer. The consumer is usually referred as worker because it performs some work that the producer can, is not able to do right now and doesn't want to do right now. So, for example, the typical trivial example is the web application that has the welcome email to send to, to the user. Uh, so, the web application doesn't want to talk maybe with the, the SMTP server right now. Maybe it's not available or it's slow to talk with it right now. So, it instead sends a message to the disk server, to the messaging system, and says, I want this email to be sent to uh, foobar at xamble.com. Then there is a worker that's responsible to sending emails that fetches this message from the queue and processes the message. So, uh, because of this, we often refer to, to, to messages to jobs in the disk API. And in general, in this talk, you will 
hear me saying jobs or messages and it's the same uh, stuff. Uh, however, this Q API is completely agnostic from the, the point of view of what a message is. Can be a, a, a little uh, piece of text, maybe a JPEG of a dog running, anything is okay, basically. It's a binary blob, can be even large, small, whatever you want. We will follow the life uh, of a single message to understand a bit better what this queue is because uh, message queues uh, are, if you look at the API, most of the times are all alike, but we want to understand what's the difference between this queue and the other message queues. Add job is where we create messages. We send this command to this queue with the, uh, the name of the queue because there are multiple queues with different names. Maybe one is for email sending, one is in order to resize pictures, one is for workers that can got videos and stuff like that. And then there is the job that's just a string. And the timeout because this queue performs some work in order to create the message in the cluster. And if it is not able to perform this work in time, you may, win, may want it to return uh, again with an error uh, if the timeout is rigid. Usually if you specify a timeout of zero, it will try forever to, to ma materialize the message in the system. What you get in reply to add job is uh, uh, the name of the job, that is ID. The ID of the job is a very long string. There are just two characters at the start and two at the end that are used in order for humans especially to understand it's a disk ID. And also useful for sanity checks from the server uh, side that, so if you send garbage, it immediately checks there is no DSQ and the length doesn't match and says this is not a valid ID. Then there is a reference of the node ID and an unique message ID that's a ra random big value in order to don't collide with other, uh, with other uh, IDs in the system. So our message was originated from the client, reached the cluster and was created inside the cluster because of the add job command. And now the the, we need uh, uh, some way in order for workers to fetch these, uh, these messages. This is the job of the get job command, and you can fetch for multiple queues at the same time. Maybe a worker is not specialized, but is able to send email and do encode videos. So it fetches from the email and videos queue uh, at the same time. You can spe specify account with get job. So you can say, just give me 100 jobs, because I am very hungry to uh, process a lot of jobs uh, in a batch in order to uh, optimize performances. However, in our example of the message that was used in order to send the welcome email to the user, what happens if the, we provide the message from this queue to the worker, and then the worker tries to talk with the SMTP server, but the S S S SMTP server is not available right now. So it's not possible to send email, and eventually the worker gives up. Or maybe the worker just crashes. The message is lost. And at this point, because we want the user to receive uh, the welcome email, we need to figure out some, some way for, for her or him to, to reach eventually uh, uh, the, to, to receive the email. What we do in this queue is that the, the workers must acknowledge explicitly to the server when the message was processed. Otherwise, this queue assumes that the message was not processed, and it will provide again later, at a later time, the same message to a different worker, or maybe to the same worker that recovered after a crash. And this is performed using the hack job uh, 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 command, where you can specify multiple IDs, not just one, in order for you maybe batch process the multiple messages, and you can batch acknowledge multiple messages in order to improve latency and performances. This is called a queue that has an at least one uh, delivery semantics. It means that a message can be provided to, uh, to, to consumers from one to an infinite number of, of times. But for sure, it will never be delivered zero times. Because if the message is not explicitly acknowledged, it will be delivered again and again and again forever. However, this queue is able to provide the other side of the semantics that's at most one's delivery. 
with um, at most once you get messages that are delivered zero or one time. If uh, the worker lose the message one time, it will not get delivered. It's usually not what you want because if you have at least once using it in the impotent processing, you can have reliable messaging. Instead, the second uh, uh, delivery semantic can be useful like if you want to update uh, a progress bar in a client view or something like that, but nothing uh, that where re reliability is needed. What controls the uh, fact that a job is scheduled again for delivery is the retry option. In this case, we say, uh, after one hour, if you didn't receive an acknowledge from a worker, please distribute again the message to the next worker. However, to get a welcome email after one month may not be super fun. Uh, so there is also a TTL uh, value. The TTL usually should be set to a value after which to process the job no longer makes sense, basically. Otherwise, if you set it to a, a value that's too small, you risk to be unreliable because when the time to leave is re reached, the job will be destroyed whatever it was delivered correctly or not. It's just a hard time limit. Another interesting feature is the messages can be sent to the disk cluster, but you can say, please, don't materialize this, uh, this message, just don't, don't deliver this message to any worker before one hour or before one month. This uh, avoids that you need like a cron job or something like uh, uh, that in order to, to, to schedule work to be done later. This is up to disk. Of course, if you fool your server with delayed jobs, you use more memory. Another, another option is replicate. By default, disk uses synchronous replication. If you use replicate tree, it means that the add job command should receive the OK from the server with the ID only after the message is replicated to three or more nodes. Or more because it can distribute to five because you didn't acknowledge it back. But for sure, you know that the specified number of copies will exist inside the cluster. Synchronous replication for certain use cases can be slow. So you can opt out from it with the async option. You say, still try to replicate the job the specified number of times, but please let me run away as soon as possible with my message ID. If you are not able to replicate the message the specified number of times, I'm okay anyway. It's just the best effort in this case. Moreover, there is optional uh, persistence. Uh, basically, this queue can be configured just to uh, be completely ephemeral uh, so that nodes take the, the messages in memory and nothing on disk. Or like Redis, you can enable an up and only file so every message received gets logged on disk with different F-Sync policies like in Redis. What means replication and persistence? Replication is the cluster effort to retain messages so that in the face of uh, n, n minus one uh, failures, there is still for sure one copy inside the cluster. Persistence instead can be seen as a single node effort to retain the message. So will it retain the message after, the, after a crash and later a recovery or not? And with different F-Sync policies, you get different levels of uh, efforts to retain the message of the single node. There are many other commands. These are the, the uh, I showed you the, the basic API. There are introspection commands because uh, you know we know we want all the web fun, fancy web interfaces and also the monitoring systems able to inspect what is happening inside uh, our message queue. And there is job management if you want to control exactly the behavior of jobs or for the bugging. And uh, an interesting feature is the working command. There are certain tasks that's not really clear if they are going to, 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 to take for the worker one minute or 10 minutes or 20 minutes. So using the working command, uh, a, a worker can provide a best effort hint to the server about the fact that it is still processing that video that's bigger than expected. So please don't deliver the same message again to another node. 
However, there is a hard time limit for working because if half the time to live has elapsed, the command is no, long, no longer accept. Otherwise, a worker, a worker with a bug can continue to say working, 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 and basically monopolize the message and uh, not, uh, we lo lo it's uh, like losing the messages. A worker is not able to, to provide uh, any work but will retain for, forever the, the, the job. This went cap. Cap was like a pretty un hit today, apparently. So this queue is purely AP. And it's very easy to build an AP message queue because basically jobs uh, are immutable, if not for the state that can be ac active or acknowledged. And the merge function between jobs is that uh, if uh, at least one copy of the same message across the cluster is acknowledged, everybody converges to the acknowledged state in order for the message to be eventually evicted from the cluster. Uh, a availability means that producers and consumers are able to make progresses as long as single node is still reachable. Of course, if you have 100 nodes and, one lo and you have one spare node remaining, it will be overloaded with uh, traffic and stuff like that. But in theory, it's like that. I believe that the very interesting feature of uh, this queue is the federation. You don't care about the difference between nodes. For example, do you have uh, 10 cluster nodes and want to add all your nodes to the same, uh, all your messages to the same node, you can do that. When the node feels it's starting to fill up, it replicates the messages to the other nodes. Otherwise, you added your messages in one node, but want, want to fetch messages from a different node. This is also possible. Uh, nodes will create uh, automatically routes in order to exchange messages and will uh, even sense what's the rate at which the messages should be sent between nodes in order to have some kind of congestion control. And um, federation also means that a simple big queue is split among nodes. So you don't have like a single queue that must live in a single master. Where is the catch? Because uh, it looks almost too, too cool to be true. The, the reality is that uh, in order to get these features, uh, I made, made a very big design sacrifice. That's just best effort ordering. Usually message queues had like this uh, taboo of total order of mess uh, uh, casual order of messages. So if a message was provided first, it should be go out first. But there are tons of use cases where this is not needed. And when you need this, chances are you have a CP store and you can use the no ordered queue to turn it to uh, or the, uh, an or like if it was an ordered queue because you have another trust of uh, uh, consistent state. However, best effort ordering doesn't mean to have no order whatsoever. You have some order and uh, the order you have is approximated. When a message is created, a millisecond timestamp, the, the work clock timestamp of the node it was created is, is uh, put in the message, plus a counter for the messages created in the same millisecond. So, okay, messages are not ordered, but are kind of ordered. But of course, the order is completely violated when the message is delivered again because the first uh, delivery was not acknowledged. And... Uh, not everything is still implemented, even if most is implemented, you can test the system right now. One of the most interesting uh, uh, things for users is dead letters, because sometimes there are jobs that are in, in a, a permanent failure. I don't know, like a wrong email address, so the SMTB completely refuses it forever. And you gave, need a way to understand what's happening. Uh, usually, this problem is solved with a dead letter queue. So jobs failing multiple times get put in a different queue. I didn't like a lot this concept of failure generating a new message in another queue. So I'm trying to instead provide two different things. When you get the job with the get job API, you get two counters. The number of multiple deliveries that happen, and it's just an approximated best effort counter, but uh, eventually, if a job is in permanent failure, you see it increasing. And the number of explicit NAC, negative acknowledges from clients, 
With these two, two counters, the worker is able to make its de decisions. It can push the message in a, in a dead letter queue, or may just log something, or may flag something in the database, whatever it wants. And more introspection, uh, more uh, uh, cluster uh, facilities to remove nodes so that uh, when I want to remove, a, I think node is, sim is simple, it's an AP system, so AP it's very easy. But when I want to remove the node, I want the node to stay quiet, uh, just serving the content it has, but no longer accepting new messages, and when finally it is empty, I remove it. This is a feature I'm, I'm implementing. And of course, more stability because the system is very, uh, very new. And this is the project uh, homepage and uh, uh, I will be glad to ask any question if you give it a try. And thank you for listening.